I have been learning to program for over six years. And if we want to get really specific, the first piece of code that I touched was 12 years ago in 2013 during my high school computer class where we learned Scratch. Now, I would be lying if I said that it came natural to me. In fact, during my time learning, I continuously doubted myself and my ability because nothing about code made sense to me. For years I struggled, and it got so bad that I was ready to drop game development and software altogether. But I persevered, kept going, continued to struggle, and here I am, working full time as a game developer, working on my dream game. And I even make tutorials and guides and discussions on programming, something a younger me could never have imagined. So how did I make that happen? Well, first I want to say that there really is no magic formula. Yes, there's a lot of hard work, and I'll get into that, but the biggest point I want to make is something I struggled with for years. And it was this belief that there are two types of people. Those who just get it, and those who don't and never will. And I was told this by students and even some teachers. With programming, there's a common misconception that you need to be a math genius. But the fact is, you really don't need to know math at all. Don't get me wrong, it helps, and it'll probably make your life easier, but there is no such thing as not having the brain for it. And let me tell you, I am living proof, because I had people tell me, you're just not going to get it, and you're not good enough. Now, another thing I want to address is the fact that I went to university for game development, so a lot of my struggles came from that experience. And having completed the degree and reflected on it, I don't think university is a necessity for this industry. It's going to help, especially with the core programming basics, and it probably will make you stand out when you're applying for jobs, but it's not always going to teach you what you can't learn yourself. And I say that as I would say most, if not all, of my major learning milestones in this field came from either self-studies or out of my time at university. Let me get into how I learned, how I improved, and how I continue to improve every single day. Because even now, six years on and three years working full-time, I will never say I know everything in this industry. There's always something to learn. So let that be our first lesson. This might seem like an obvious one, but seriously, with something as big as programming and with the growth of this industry, you will never know everything. And that's fine, but don't let that deter you. In fact, be excited about it. Be excited that there is stuff to learn and that there is always more to learn. Take every opportunity that you have to just experiment and try a different solution out. It's really easy to fall into certain traps of repetition, especially when starting new projects. And I'm going to use game development as a big talking point here since that's my background. But one thing I see way too often is people starting a project and not doing anything different. It's just a reskin of a previous one that they've done. One of the biggest things that I've learned through my time in studying and learning game development, and even just when I'm coding now, is to think about a solution that extends out of my immediate use case. How can I have this be applicable in other scenarios? And I don't necessarily mean different projects, but say you're building an item system and you create a script for an item. You get it to work, then you think, I want another item. You write the second script, same thing. Then all of a sudden, down the line, you have 15 different item scripts with a lot of shared behavior, but maybe one value is different or one function is executed differently. I'm not saying this is an issue, because while you're learning, this is an extremely viable solution to just understand the principles and the core basics. But if you're in a position where you see this and you do think there has to be a better way to do it, there probably is. So do some research, look online, how are other people doing similar things? How have other games done this? And iterate on your solution. Again, it might seem time consuming, but a good chunk of the game development pipeline is going to be iterating on an existing solution to make it more useful. Now, of course, this doesn't really help how to get better at programming. I mean, let's go back to the start. How are you even meant to start in the first place? And the best answer is going to be tutorials. Just follow a tutorial, copy it line for line, and get a blank project in a working state. And the best example I use is arcade games, because they're complete and simple, yet complex enough that the code is going to challenge you. And this is exactly how I learned. When you have this complete project, experiment with it. Know you're going to make mistakes, the code's going to be messy, who cares, we're in the process of learning and understanding. Let's take Tetris for example. Look into the code and just read it. And at this stage, you don't even need to write anything yet or necessarily understand anything yet, but deliberately break parts of the code. For example, comment out a function, play the game and see what happens. Move code around and see how that impacts the game. 
because then you start to understand what the code blocks are doing and how you can alter it in your own way. When you feel you have a decent enough understanding of the code, start designing something new. Like in Tetris, make a new block or a block that does something when you destroy it. Whatever you want to see, experiment with it and let this process be fun. Make it enjoyable. There is no need to rush this. Now, it can also be extremely easy during this process to get discouraged. Maybe things don't make sense or you just feel like you're not getting anywhere with it but it's just as important in learning to also manage your expectations. This isn't an overnight process. There unfortunately isn't a magic solution where all of a sudden you'll know how to do everything. But what this is teaching you is to build solutions to other problems. And these solutions may not be immediately obvious. And while you're learning, in fact, I do this all the time still, is to just write down the problem on a piece of paper, break it down into chunks. It's easy to just wanna to get to the solution immediately, but it's infinitely more manageable to break it down into something that's easier to consume. It'll stop you from being overwhelmed, and it'll also help you build up these core problem-solving skills that are absolutely necessary in game development and programming as a whole. And you'll generally find that each chunk can be solved in a way you've done before. Say you want an inventory system in your game. Well, let's break that down. Our first step is to identify our end goal. Our second step is to break it down into core components. So just break up each component within our end goal into its own system. And finally, iterate on each of these pieces. And while you're doing this, don't overbuild early. Keep it as simple as possible. Get it working, then worry about edge cases and polish later. Now, it's important to note on the topic of discouragement to not compare yourself to other people. This was something that I really struggled with at university. I felt people understood what they were doing and I didn't. And somehow it felt like I was the only person out of hundreds of people to just not understand it. And so every day I felt like I was comparing myself to them. But the moment that I stopped comparing myself and instead used other people as a benchmark for where I wanted to be, I found I was able to start learning and pushing myself and my abilities so much more. Because everyone's sort of on their own journey, especially in this industry. These people may have started years before you. Now, the final piece of advice, again, may seem obvious, but this one cannot be understated. Be excited to learn. You really have to want to do this and be passionate about it because there is so much self-learning involved with it. And like I said, it's not an overnight victory. It's a never ending journey, but you have to be willing to go through that and even be excited at the prospect of that. I love that there's so much to learn. I love that I know I will never know everything in this industry, but I love looking at the progress that I make every day and how far I have come from starting. If you're in a similar position, maybe you're just starting out or feeling that doubt that you're not cut out for this. You're not alone and it's completely natural to feel that way. Take a breath, take a step back and know that you absolutely have what it takes to do this. Now, if there is a problem in programming that you're having, maybe it's specific to a project, maybe it's a mental barrier, let me know down in the comments or reach out to me on Discord. I am always ready and willing to assist everyone who needs it. Like I said, I was nowhere near the smartest person in my cohort, and it took me years to finally understand what I was doing and feel like I belonged. But I never really had someone on my side saying I can do it. So if you're going through something similar, I will be that person on your side, helping you every step of the way. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Feel free to drop a comment down below and share your journey and the things that have helped you get to where you are today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.